thank you for having me today. I'm excited to share our journey of transformation through open source um, and explore how we can help Japanese uh, businesses become more agile and, uh, and innovative. Um, so before we dive in, let me share a bit about myself. Um, I'm a technologist at heart, uh, passionate about coding, culture, and collaboration. I spent a lot of time recently. Uh, my favorite tool is uh, Cursor. And um, these days, my colleagues are Claude, ChatGPT, uh, and our own Akmo AI agents. So AI is already really part of our daily work. I've been in Japan for about 24 years, and it uh, um, really all started. I usually asked why I came to Japan. Um, the reason is simple. It's anime. I love animation. Ikusan is one of my favorites. And I love Kigidam. Uh, I love, uh, I love uh, um, some other uh, Shinchan and other um, the anime. Um, and I've been uh, in IT uh, about 17 years, uh, more than 17 years. So as a former CTO of uh, Invest, a fintech uh, public company, and now founder of Alcomo, I've seen both sides, the challenges of tradition, uh, traditional systems and the possibilities of open source tr transformation. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, this quote from Jimmy Wells captures the essence of uh, what I want to share today. Open source is not just a development methodology, it's a way of thinking about collaboration, sharing, and innovation that can apply far beyond software. So from my experience, I believe this is true, um, So, um, and I'd like to explore um, how uh, you know, this is key to transforming Japanese businesses. The agenda for today um, is, uh, has uh, five parts. Uh, the first one is uh, the wake-up call, so why change is necessary. Then we'll explore the power of open source, um, what's possible, the cultural transformation section. Um, we'll show how this perfectly fits with Japanese values. Um, and uh, in the modern innovation landscape, we'll see what's happening in LLM and how, our, our, um, we, how we use uh, open uh, source LLM in our Como. Uh, finally, we'll, we'll discuss the path forward. So, um, first, let's look at where Japan stands today in, in technology adoption. According to the DX report from IPA, from, did from, uh, 2000, uh, from last year, only 10 to 20% of Japanese companies are using modern technologies like containers and microservices. Compare this to up to 70% in the US. And even more telling, is this 70, 75, uh, up to 75% of Japanese IT is controlled by system integrators or third party uh, vendors. In the US, it's almost the reverse, uh, with 65% 60 um, being uh, end user companies and startups. This is, just, uh, this is not just about numbers, it's about our ability to, comp uh, to compete globally. When three quarters of our IT vendors is controlled, um, is vendor controlled, how can we move at the speed modern business demands? I'll, I'll talk about a story uh, from my experience uh, when I was a CTO at, at, at a fintech company. So um, um, Invest is a, a regulated uh, fintech company. And in my, in just uh, in my first three months, we faced many system outages. I had to go to apologize to regulators several times. Then came a DDoS attack that brought down our trading systems. Why? Because of a single point of failure in the corporate website that no one knew about. But here's what really hurt. We couldn't access our own trading um, system code. Um, it was managed by a third party. In fact, the full stack, uh, including infrastructure, was managed by a third party. So every change took months. I remember one particular um, sorry. I remember one particular um, frustrating moment when we needed a simple low balance configuration change. The quote came back thousands of thousands uh, of dollars and a month of waiting for a single um, uh, configuration change. So we were quite literally moving at the speed of our slowest vendor. This is from my journey, try to get some pictures from, uh, from Kingdom. Uh, and this is probably how I looked in most meetings, uh, frustrations. But really, the real cost went far beyond money and time. Uh, our business agility was paralyzed. Innovation was impossible when you can't control your own systems. Security vulnerabilities kept 
us up at night. Operation cost kept um, rising. But actually, what was really worse was the frustration in our developers' eyes. These talented professionals that we hired to innovate spent most of their time navigating vendor relationships instead of building solutions. This was our breaking point. We knew we needed to take control of our destiny, and that's where our open source journey began. Now, let me share um, with you what transformation actually lo uh, looks like in practice from my experience. Many organizations initially focus, focus here on operation excellence, which makes sense. Uh, you start by modern, modernizing legacy systems because that's your immediate pain point. You work on reducing the problem cost because that's what management understands. You optimize infrastructure because that's what keeps you up at night. I went through this exact transformation as CTO uh, at Invest, and this is where the journey typically begins, with the tangible, measurable uh, improvements. But the problem is that a lot of companies in Japan stuck here. Actually, the goal is to achieve this, the operation uh, excellence. But here's what's actually fascinating. Once you achieve operation excellence, something magical happens. You suddenly have the bandwidth for true innovation. You have the right infrastructure to experiment and innovate without collateral damage. The real power comes when these two sides work together. And this is why we say open source is the catalyst for change. It doesn't just solve your operational problems, it opens the door to innovation. Now, let me, before I show our um, like what we did uh, using open source, let me share something powerful that Andy Jesse, the CEO of Amazon, said. He said that invention requires two things. One, the ability to try a lot of experiments, and two, not having to live with the collateral damage of failed experiments. This is exactly what open source enables. When, you've, when you're vendor locked, experiments are expensive and risky. But with open source, you can experiment freely, fail safely, learn quickly, and iterate rapidly. Now, here is how we built our foundation. I'll be honest, we were desperate at that time. We, fell, we felt we needed to rebuild everything from scratch. But looking back, this was our desperate, uh, desperation speaking. Infrastructure operations, we started with infrastructure as code using Terraform, so no more waiting months for changes. Kubernetes um, for our container platform um, gave us true scalability. Of course, it took us a lot of time to, 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 to learn. Um, observability and, and security, Prometheus and Gravana gave us real-time visibility, no more um, blind spots. It helps when you have some cool dashboard to show progress to stakeholders and capture real-time data. And from data handling to development, we built a complete, um, a complete integrated stack using open source. Now, let me be clear. You don't need to do everything yourself like we did. This comprehensive stack is just to show you what's possible. Think of it as a menu. You can pick and choose what makes sense for your organization, for your team. Maybe you just need a better monitoring. Perhaps just, mo just modernizing your development pipeline. Sorry. Or starting with one specific applications. The beauty of open source is its flexibility. Sorry. It's, it's flexibility. Every piece here was chosen not just for its technical merit, but for its ability to give us control of our destiny. You can take the same approach, but at your own pace, choosing the tools that solves your specific challenge. And in most cases, you probably have a partner that, re that uh, is invested in your uh, success to help you. Now, the results were transformative. Changes that took months now take minutes. Development that took days uh, now take hours. More importantly, we can do A-B testing, A -B testing because we couldn't do it before. We had no control on our, uh, of our systems. So we achieved 60% um, reduction in operation cost, basic configuration zero cost um, now. Obviously, there are other costs like um, you know, uh, human 
cost. Like you, you, obviously, you, you have to learn these this technologies and stuff, but direct cost was zero cost. And, uh, but most rewarding change, seeing our developers excited again, watching innovation flourish, seeing people grow and learn. We, and because of this, we went to reInvent, uh, we went to these events many times. So there's a lot of learning for the team. And open source really didn't just transform our technology, it transformed our business. Now, I want to be honest, this wasn't easy. We had many heated debates with risk and compliance, endless meetings with accounting about cost structure, because if that changes, you were vendor um, uh, ori uh, oriented, now you have internal development, internal uh, development, so the, the cost structure changes. Uh, complex discussions about engineering compensation, um, hiring really technical engineers is, is, is you know, um, is not cheap. Um, so, so we had these discussions. Um, and we had to implement um, CSS benchmark, figure out 24-7 support before vendors were, were, were used to support us. Now we had to, to support our own systems. Now the hardest part was not the technology, it was transforming the organization. Um, and that was and that what made it sustainable. Now, these are some of the um, lessons learned from our journey. It is really important to start small and think big. This is just isn't advice, it's really survival. We learned that project, um, that pilot projects build confidence and create internal champions. Investing in people and training, the, the technology is actually the easiest part. Um, the team's growth is actually the organization's growth, so this is really, really important. Uh, build internal champions. Find the passionate ones, because usually they'll inspire others. Engage stakeholders early. This is crucial in Japanese organizations. People do not want to look bad in meetings, so you'd need, you need to give them a heads up. You need to explain. Um, and document everything. Um, one of the things that really helped us is as we were hiring, we were documenting a lot. So really documenting your future self and your auditors will thank you. We had an external auditor, um, and luckily we were, because obviously as you're coding, as you're building, documentation comes, comes last, but we were doing it because we were hiring people, and that really helped, because we, um, during the external auditor we had, uh, we, were, we were able to explain what we were doing. And some of the pain points is try uh, trying to, um, to too much too fast. Remember, you don't have to rebuild everything. Underestimating cultural impact. Um, technology changes in weeks, but people change in months, sometimes in years. Neglecting um, cultural aspects like Nemawashi and Horenso. The, these are uh, um, uh, cultural aspects of Japan. These tradition practices can actually be your allies if you understand how, how you use them well. Um, and also forgetting about support. Really, when you think about building, it's a really important to think about support um, and ownership. Like who would, for example, if you have a 3 a.m. incident, it needs clear ownership. That's, that's, that's really um, uh, uh, very important from our experience. Now, I would like to, to um, talk about the cultural transformation. Um, Japan already, um, you're probably familiar with the um, ethos, with open, open source ethos, um, which are collaboration, flexibility, and transparency. And Japan already embraces this open source ethos by default. Uh, we have uh, what we call the tatta ittai, the power of many as one. So in, in, in Japanese aesthetics, we have the concept of ma, the beauty in negative space. Similarly, open source shows us the power of collective and seen effort. For flexibility, we have what we call tekyo no michi, the way of adaptation. Uh, it's used in martial arts like uh, Aikido. So using your opponent's force, uh, force to your advantage. Um, open source gives us the same flexibility, adapting tools to our needs. And for transparency, we have what we call hikarita, hikarita makimono, the open scroll. Historically, scrolls weren't just for writing, 
um, they work for sharing knowledge. Uh, this is the essence of open source, sharing knowledge, growing together. So open source isn't foreign to uh, Japanese values. It amplifies them. Do you know who this person is? Do you have an idea? Um, this is the mid-journey version of Oda Nobunaga. Oda Nobunaga-san. So um, Oda Nobunaga-san is a, a strategic general, as most of you know. And so, and like a strategic general, we need to build trust and alignment. Stakeholder enga engagement is really, really important. We used uh, Nemawashi for Kubernetes adoption. We started with small teams discussions, built consensus gradually, um, include operations, include risk and compliance, explained how the operation model will, will, will be when, when, we, when we move to Kubernetes and all that. So that happened earlier. And we showed this, um, we showed a working proof of, uh, of concept. Next, communication uh, evolution. We integrated Horinso. You probably know Horinso. Horinso is the, um, um, it's a Japanese concept for report, communicate, and consult. Um, uh, and so we integrated that concept with modern tools like regular status updates, clear escalation path, transparent documentation. Uh, so people didn't need to come up with a solution before reporting an issue. You just share it as soon as a, a problem happens. So this is cultural aspect. In, in, the, in the US, for example, you need to think first about the solution before you bring um, the, the problem. But um, we did the opposite. First, bring the problem, share it as soon as possible, and then we collectively find the solution. Um, so this is some, some, some um, uh, uh, cultural uh, differences. Quality automation. Uh, this is where Japanese excellence uh, truly shines. Traditional QC, QC principles automated through DevOps. Quality built in. Best of both worlds. Uh, Japanese quality culture meets modern automation. So really we're building the future on proven foundations. So we don't need to let all those you know, um, cultural aspects of foundations uh, go. We can embrace them while also embracing um, new tools, new met methodologies. Um, Next, I'll, I'll just speak about, um, obviously, AI. Everyone is adding AI slides in their um, the, the slides and presentation, so um, I thought to, to, to do so. But this is from an open source uh, perspective. And um, also wanted to, to briefly talk about how we're using open source um, LLMs uh, in Alcom ourselves to, uh, to help existing clients and also uh, to build our own tools. Now, um, you're probably familiar with, with, with this graph. Um, if you look at these numbers, you, you see that open source AI models are now competing with proprietary solutions. But the real story isn't just about performance. It's really about accessibility, um, which means um, democratizing innovation, um, no more million dollars AI budget, local deployment and control, customized for your specific needs, and this is what we've been doing. In fact, we are currently helping a 180 years old company in Japan in fashion industry use open source LLM for specific needs to check fabric quality. It's, it's in, 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 in fashion, uh, and they create garments, they create fabric, they, break, they create patterns, and they spend a lot of, a lot of money uh, in, in, um, in quality and checking quality, checking fabrics. And so we're using um, open source um, uh, LM and, and Vision to, to help them um, automate some of these processes. So open source is turning AI from a luxury into a universal tool for innovation. And this is just um, not theory. We'll, we'll explain how we're doing it ourselves in, uh, in the next slides. Um, here, just sharing some um, global stories, um, uh, how these LLMs are playing out across industries. Um, well Fargo is using internal LLMs for um, secure um, uh, controlled AI for their um, customer service. Uh, Leisure Robotics, uh, democratizing uh, robotics research uh, through human-read uh, robots. 
um, zero DHA uh, open source projects indicate um, you know it's uh, they're um, uh, shifting towards business models because they're investing in open source um, and they're seeing it as a strategic for long-term innovation and market leadership, not just um, to use it internally, but they're also investing. Um, so what's fa fascinating is how each organization adapts these tools to their unique needs. As I mentioned, we're helping um, this company um, with their fashion uh, uh, problems using LM, um, uh, custom LLMs for, um, to, to help them with their uh, with their unique needs. So the message is clear. Open, um, open source is the universe, universal catalyst for innovation, transforming how industries operate and evolve. Now, how Alcomo is um, using um, LLM? So um, we are using op open source LLM in, in different ways to build agentic workflow that can help organizations operate microservices. We're also um, using them to fine tune for specific tasks like um, Japanese, like for example, JSOX reporting. Uh, it has a very, very specific format. So we're, we're, we're doing, uh, uh, we're fine tuning some of these models to, to help us, um, especially the, 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 the small models. Um, so this is a snapshot of, of, of Alcomo AI tools. Uh, behind it, um, we have AI um, um, agentic framework, and it helps you with, um, it's, a, it's a little bit like, the, uh, if you're familiar with Devon, uh, Devon AI, the software uh, AI, it's a little bit like, like it's where you actually ask it, for example, um, how, you, how would you upgrade, in this case, you want to upgrade Kubernetes from 1.25 to 1.29 or 30 now, and, and it helps you because uh, it has access to your to your systems. So it tells you um, how how you do it, uh, like what it creates a runbook for you, and it helps you um, uh, to, to to do it. Um, so so we're we're using these um, these LLM uh, open source LLM to to help us uh, with uh, with this. So really help us uh, we're building business on on top of these uh, of this open source. Um, and so, um, sorry if I, if I move to, uh, too fast. So to wrap up, um, so as we wrap, let me, uh, I want to leave you with three key uh, uh, thoughts. First, um, open source is strategic, not just a development methodology, it's a catalyst um, for business transformation and key to future innovation. And the time is, is really now, um, AI revolution is accelerating. Tools are almost enterprise ready, not not entirely enterprise ready, but uh, but getting enterprise ready. Um, community is is thriving, and uh, the third one is really start small, think big, um, begin with pilot projects, build on proven uh, foundations, and uh, leverage a global community. So. The future belongs to those who embrace open collaboration. Um, and um, this is not the end, just the beginning of, um, of a journey. So I'm really interested, generally interested in what challenges you're facing, where you're in, uh, in what phase in your uh, open source journey uh, you are at, and how we can help each other uh, succeed. So um, let's stay connected. Happy to uh, move to Q and A. It's a bit uh, to. We've got about fifteen minutes, right? Any any questions? Apologies, I'm still jet lagged. So <laughs> a little bit, uh, you know, going a little bit too fast, but. Um, Can you maybe go a bit more into the details? How is it like, you know, kind of bringing in open source to the, say, old Japanese companies that kind of dealt with only like a vendor specific, you know, enterprise software? And, you know, how does that kind of work? How, how, where do you even kind of go starting that discussion? So for, for, for uh, great, thank you for the, for the great question. Uh, for us, it was, it was really easy because we were suffering. 
so we, I think, I had to go and apologize to regulators many times. So it was clear from a management perspective that ne things need to change. Um, and uh, so with the way we, we started, we started really small. We started with, with uh, proof of concept uh, on um, how, um, so we, we, we created a small uh, uh, cloud center of excellence. So we started with a small, um, uh, how we call it, um, not MVC, you call it a minimum viable cloud. Um, and, and we, again, we, we brought, the, the most important is really, because when we talk about cloud, when we talk about open source, the security aspect um, always, you know, is this secure, is this, um, uh, so we started with a prototype and uh, we involved a risk and compliance. But the problem is we had to have a lot of, lot of communications because a lot of terms were, were new to, to compliance and risk. We have to translate a lot of these, um, a lot of these, uh, these terms. But what, what really helped us is, um, our, our partner, AWS, they, uh, they helped us prepare. They, they, they were part of the, um, of the meetings, explaining the, the, the risk, explaining what it means to, to, to move to, to public cloud, what it means to use managed services, what it means to, to build these, and uh, that really helped. So having a um, first management needs to be on board, so you need to see that the, the, the need for, for, for change, need for embracing this open source, and they need to see it as a strategic, not just uh, so it really needs to come from, from the top, it's, uh, it's, clear, uh, it's clear. And then having a digital partner that can help you, can help the communication internally, is, I, I, I think is really, uh, really important. And that, that in our case, that was the case. And again, starting small um, helped us, especially because we were dealing with, um, you know, um, it's important to change because the regulated environment, so you can't, you can't change uh, quickly, you have to plan things. and. Uh, so we started with, um, with charts, for example, we just started with existing data, um, creating dashboards for existing, uh, existing data, because we owned the data, we didn't own everything, we didn't own the code the system, but we owned the data. So we, we looked at the data, we created data lake, we created dashboards, and that was small wins, so we started with small wins. And, um, but, uh, but yeah, we, uh, again, started really small, but with, with, imp uh, with big impacts, uh, anything that can, that can bring everyone together and see the value of open source is, is good. I hope that answered the question. Thank you. Any, any, any question? Might maybe I, I ask? Do you like Kingdom? Do you watch Kingdom? This is a, it's a, one of my, it's one of my favorite anime. Okay, so if <clears throat> if there are no more um, questions, I think we're about almost thirty minutes. We can finish early. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, for your time.